In this long playlist, we're going to be taking you through all of the essential math skills for A-level chemistry, but in this video, we're going to be looking at empirical formula. Now, this is something that you probably haven't come across at GCSE because it wasn't on all of the examples, but it is the sort of thing that comes up a lot within larger questions. So it is a skill you need to be really, really confident with. In this video, we're going to be taking you through the skills really slowly, and then in later videos in the playlist, we can be using the skills, incorporating it into larger questions. Here we're going to have a look at some empirical formula questions. So to solve these, what we should get started with is just reminding ourselves of what an empirical formula actually is. So an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. And it's best thought of in contrast to what molecular formula is, which is the actual number of atoms in a compound. So let's use the idea here to have a look at question one. So starting with 1a, we've got the molecular formula C6H6, which is actually a molecule called benzene. And that's the molecular formula because that is actually how many carbons and hydrogens it has. Now you can see here that's a 6 to 6 ratio. And we can simplify that down to a 1 to 1 ratio because it's got a common number, divide them each by 6. So if you divide 6 and 6 each by 6, you get 1 carbon and 1 hydrogen. And so for that reason, CH is the empirical formula. You could think of it as C1H1 as well. So there we go. So let's use that same idea now that we've put it in practice for B. So here we have ethene, which is C2H4. That again is a molecular formula because that's how many carbons and hydrogens there actually are in that molecule. So we've got a two to four ratio between the carbons and the hydrogens. If we divide each of those by the common factor two, we get a one to two ratio, which leaves us with one carbon and two hydrogens. So what that leaves us with is an empirical formula of CH2. And that there is our answer to B. Okay, let's use that same idea to do one C now. So for C here, we have a molecular formula of C6H12O6. And again, that's telling us exactly how many atoms of each of those elements are in this substance. So it's a 6 to 12 to 6 ratio. So if we simplify that, we can see each of those can be divided by 6. That's their common factor. So if we divide each of those numbers in that ratio by 6, we will get the simplest whole number ratio. And that is 1 to 2 to 1. So whereas the molecular formula of this substance is C6H12O6, we're going to get an empirical formula of CH2O because that is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in that substance. So let's check this out now. 1D. So for 1D now, we have another substance, which is C4H8O2. And that is its molecular formula. So we know that substance has four carbon atoms, eight hydrogen and two oxygens. So if we look at each of those numbers in the ratio, which is a four to eight to two ratio, we can see that there's a common factor again. This time that common factor is two. So that means if we look at each of these numbers, we can divide each of them by two. So that leaves us with a two to four to one ratio. That is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in this substance, which means the empirical formula will be C2H4O, because that there clearly tells us what that simplest whole number ratio is. Perfect. So now, for the last bit of 1, 1e, e, we now have the substance C6H12O2. And of course that there is the molecular formula 
Like we said, that's the actual number of atoms of each of those substances of the carbon, the hydrogen and the oxygen in that molecule. Now that gives us a ratio of 6 to 12 to 2. And if we look at those numbers, we can see they have a common factor of 2, which means that we can divide each of those through by 2 to get this simplest whole number ratio. So that leaves us with a 3 to 6 to 1 ratio which means that we can write down its empirical formula as C3H6O, and that there is our empirical formula, which is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in the substance. So next up for question two, we have a question which is much more realistic as to what you might see in an exam. You know, it's got sort of a wordy problem, which is very, very, similar to what we might be asked to do throughout the course. So with this, I have a, a general structure that I really like to lay out my answer to do this. Essentially, what we need to do is to work out the moles of each substance, or at least the molar ratio, because we're not technically given masses in this particular question, and then use those moles or the molar ratio to get the simplest molar ratio. So let's have a go at doing this. I'll show you how I like to lay these out. So how I like to lay these out is I will write the atoms along the top of the page. So sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen. And I'm gonna make this into a bit of a table. So I'm gonna have the mass or percentage by mass as one row, the MRs as another row, and then the moles or molar ratio as my third row. So, now I would start to fill in the information. So they might give the masses or percentage by masses, but I'd write them all in. So for sulfur, I have 32.65. For oxygen, I know I have 65.3. And for hydrogen, I know that I have 2.05. So I would fill those all in, in the mass or percentage by mass row. Next up, I would go to the periodic table and get all of the MRs of these. So I know sulfur is 32.1, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is one. And then I would remember, well, mass over MR gives me the moles. So I will divide each of those to get the moles or molar ratio of each of these. So I've got 1.017 of sulfur, 4.08 for oxygen, and then for hydrogen, I get 2.05. So now that I've got these numbers, we essentially have a ratio. But if we divide these by the smallest of these numbers, we should get the smallest, the simplest whole number ratio of atoms here. And because we're dealing with actual numbers, it may not perfectly come out as whole numbers immediately. So we may round but only if it is very, very close to those numbers. So let's see what we get here. So we get one for, for sulfur, and then for oxygen, which is 4.08 divided by 1.017, we get 4.01. And then over for hydrogen, when we do 2.05 over 1.017, we get 2.02. Now here we can round the 4.01 to 4 because it's so, so close. And the same for the 2.02, we can round that to two. So that means we have a simplest whole number ratio of atoms here. So the empirical formula will be SO4H2, which is quite an awkward way in which those atoms are arranged. If we arrange that differently, it will be something that you probably will recognize so if you think of it as H2SO4, well that's sulfuric acid, isn't it? So there you are, that is how we're going to practice these questions. I think this method is a really solid one for laying out your information and making sure that you don't get lost with all the numbers everywhere. Let's use that method now for question three. So let's look at question three here. So I would start by laying it out with carbon and hydrogen along the top. And then I will write my column with the mass or percentage by mass, the MR, then the moles, 
and then I would start to fill it in row by row. So I know the mass is 4.8 grams of carbon, so I'm going to write 4.8 underneath the carbon. And I know that I have one gram of hydrogen, so I'll write one next to my hydrogen. Underneath, I would go to my periodic table and get the MR of both carbon and hydrogen, so that's 12 and one. Then I would use those bits of information to calculate the moles. So 4.8 divided by 12 leaves me with 0 0.4, and that is the number of moles of carbon. And then for hydrogen, we just have one over one, so we just get one for that. So now the next thing we want to do is to get the simplest ratio. And the easiest way to do this would normally be just to divide by the smallest of those two. So in this case, 0 0.4 is smaller, so I'm going to divide each of those numbers by 0 0.4 to get that simplest ratio. So if I do 0 0.4, divided by 0 0.4, I end up getting 1. And if I do 1 divided by 0 0.4, I get 2.5. Now we've got a little bit of a red flag here because 2.5 is not a whole number. And of course, for empirical formula, we need the simplest whole number ratio. Best thing we can do is just double this. And then we will get 2 to 5 instead of 1 to 2.5. So that there's our ratio, it's a two to five ratio. So our empirical formula in this case is going to be C2H5, and that there will be our solution. So good work, I hope empirical formulas are feeling a lot simpler now and you've got a good strategy as to how to solve them in future. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.